Good morning, everyone. I'm Yiru Chen. I'm from the Department of Entomology at University of Georgia. Today, I'm going to talk about the interaction between 3SWV and 3. The interaction in peanut is interesting. The tomato spot will also talk about virus. TSWV is trans transmitted by Brachiella fusca. The common name is tobacco thrips. In, that transmit the virus in a propagative and persistent way. Three is not only the peanut pest, it's also the battle of the TSWV. We can see the feeding damage, feeding injury in the field. Also, the infected peanut is common in the field. So we can see the symptom like this, concentric green spot. So TSWV, tomato spotty wheel disease is pretty common disease in Georgia. It causes economical growth. Every year, about 12 million loads in Georgia. However, the situation is getting better in Pina. We have a good IPM, good cultivar peanut. However, till now, we don't have the cultivar peanut. It has a complete resistance to TSWV, as the previous speaker mentioned. So be proactive rather than reactive. So new source of TSWV resistance in PINA is needed. Wild species are the potential resource because they harbor many good genes, probably bad or good, but I, I believe they are some good. So, but wild species is the pre and pina is era tetra pre. So, but the breeder already overcome the situation and the Samuel has a nice introduction about the era tetra pina yeah, in his talk. I'm so thankful the breeder because, because of that, I have so many material for the test. So in this study, I'm going to evaluate TSW resistance and three resistance by using different kind of genotypes. Here I list the genotype I have been test in this study, but I only use the genotype in black color. And um, because we have, we do the experiment at least two times. How do you, how do we evaluate TSWV resistance? Because TSWV is three bone disease. So it's reasonable to use three mediated inoculations. At first, I have to build up the bioliferal colony in lab. Once I have the enough colony, I put 10 female threes at the bottom of one to two weeks of seedling, and then cover with the plastic cylinders. And each genotype, we have 10 plants in one cage. Usually, TSWV will show symptoms after two weeks later. So we collect the leaf from the plants for TSWV detection. We use the we use ELISA and QPCR to know the to get the qualitative data to know where TS whether the plane is getting better or not. And also we can know how many virus in this genotype. Here comes the result. The first result show, we can see the table. The table, the infection rate is from low to high and they are two groups. The first group, the black color is the diproid genotype and the gray color is a tetraproid genotype. There is no big difference between these two groups. But however, we can see the difference between the genotype by the based on the TSWB infection. So the diproid stenospermal one and B battle one, both step one, they show lower infection rate. And the 
is different from the cultivar genotype Georgia Green, which is supposed to be the susceptible to TSWB. Okay. And the metal one show high infection rate and it's quite different from the Georgia Green. So we select the leaf, which is ELISA positive, to run the qPCR using the specific primer, engine primer. So based on the standard curve, we can know how many copy number in per narrow ground RNA. So, but the result is unexpected because I hope you have a good memory because the SS is from low to high as previous mentioned. And this group is deployed and the great part is tetraproid. So the, the genotype with high infection rate, it doesn't mean we will see high copy number in the plant. For example, the third durianesis and meganum, they has a high infection rate. However, the copy number is low. Same, oh, sorry. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, and um, metal one also show the high infection rate, but the copy number is low. So we're going to get more sample this year. How about the three resistance? So we evaluate the three resistance by feeding damage index. The, so before the best on the formula, we recall the number of leaflets with feeding injury and evaluate the feeding scar intensity. The intensity is from zero to three, based on the percentage of the feeding scar. Zero percent to 50%, more than 50%, the, rate, the rating is three. So, and divide by total number of leaflets on plane, we can get the FTI. Here comes the results. F, the YSS FTI and the SSA is the same as the previous mentions. The, we can see the three feeding in genotype change over time. There are some interaction between genotype and time. So we have to look at the feeding damage at different time points. So at seven day post inauguration, there is no difference between genotype. At 14 day post inauguration, battle one has lower feeding injury. So at 21 day post inauguration, there are three genotypes show lower three injury. So uh, it will be Velosa, Valida, and battle one. Okay, so we are so these three genotype could be the potential three resistant potential source of the three resistance. So we are curious what's the mechanism behind them. So we run the three adult to adult development. We want to see the three by arch on these genotypes. So we proved 10 female adults um, in marker cage. And after three days of the precision, we remove the female adults. I observe three from every day from L to adults until there is no adults in the cage. We see there are some negative effects on three by RG for these three genotype. Velosa, Valida, Battle One. Mm, they have longer development time compared to Georgia Green and they produce less egg. And also few adults emerge. So the surviving survival rate is lower than the Georgia Green. So it could be the reason to explain why we see the difference at 21 day post inauguration between genotypes. 
So we curious is three injury related to TSWV infection. The short answer is yes, but it depends on time. So we made the correlation between the three feeding and TSW infection and seven day post inoculation. First, we feeding damage. There is no correlation between, between infection rate and feeding damage. But after three weeks feeding, they are related. Look, and after three weeks later, the correlation is positive and more strong. So a uh, three play an important role in TSWV infection. I, so here, <laughs> then the next slide, I'm going to show you back to the, our purpose. The purpose is to looking for the good source, new source of TSWV resistance. So do you find some? Okay. Literally, uh, in 2002, they detect some deployed genotypes, and this thiocoisins uh, is a good resource for TSWV resistance. And we see the similar result in our study. Thiocoi, the infection rate is about 30%, and by the stenosperma, the, it seems more resistant could be a better resource than Diogoid. And the Magna is, is sensitive in her study and also in my study. So I think even though we use a different inoculation, but we got the consistent result compared to previous results. So if sternal sperma is a new source of TSR resistance, the next question is could could they transfer the good gene to the next generation? Okay, for example, if we uh, we look at the arrow tetraproid related to sternosperma, the infection rate of the best ster one is 38%, uh, verse ster one is 25%, mega ster one is 45%. It seems, it seems the sternosperma uh, sternosperma is a good source for TSWV resistance. So in a short summary, I want to, I think the proeginal type of sternosperma has a high resistance to fungal pathogen and nematode, we already know. And it could be the potential resource to TSW resistance as well. And the induced error tetraproid, battle one and melstein could be the potential resource to TSW resistance as well. I don't want to make a strong conclusion because, because we only have to repeat. So and for the three resistance, we, we see three on the wild related species produce less offsprings and took a longer time to complete the one generation. So it implies the three resistant mechanism could be antibiosis. Yeah. And in the end, I want to thank you, my major advisor, Babu Surimasen, and my committee member, Soraya Batioli, Dr. Mark Avani, and Dr. Steve Buck. Thank you for the help from the Wild Peanut Lab and the biggest support from my lab member. And I will take the question. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation, Iru. Do we have any questions from the audience? Have any questions? Okay, well, I've always got a question as you're aware of, and that is, I know that I see that Dr. Uh, Bertioli is on your committee. Yes. There's a lot of work being done on, the, on some of the fungal diseases using that same uh, uh, parentage. Uh, are you screening those? Are they being screened for tomato spotted wilt virus? in addition to leaf spot diseases and white mold diseases. So is that an ongoing collaboration between you and some of the other students? Yeah, it would be, yeah, if I can have more talk com coming up with uh, our students, we have, I have more idea, um, yeah. yeah. Because I know that there are, that, that's, uh, that parentage is being used now 
And I'm, I'm sure that you could work, I'm sure there's work being done not only on the leaf spot and the white mold, but what also might be for tomato spot and wolf virus as well. So, okay, yeah, any other you, questions? Paul. Well, thank you very much, Iru. And that concludes the time we have for your presentation. Thank you for participating in the Joe Sug uh, session and also for APRIS this year. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Cameron. Yeah.